But of course, whenever these crazy uncertain times uh, are upon us, hackers are always trying to come up with new ways to really exploit what's going on in the marketplace and be able to capitalize and take advantage of these small to medium businesses. And so with today's presentation and webinar, what we do is actually touching upon uh, the email threat scanner, the services around it, but also we need to highlight what the challenges people are facing today. Now with the work from home lifestyle, everyone is now trying to get refocused, trying to accommodate working from home, maybe having their kids or their animals take care of, while almost simultaneously working on the traditional business activities all directly from their home. And what this can lead to is increased distractions and anxieties for employees, for individual uh, consumers and people in the marketplace. And that's actually taking their attention away from double checking certain emails as they come in, which is gonna make them more susceptible to these types of attacks and especially rise of spear phishing is gonna be more and more prevalent. Now from Verizon's uh, report back in 2018, 93% of all email breaches are socially engineered. And that's a very important factor. Traditionally, a lot of attacks and emails started with traditional phishing with maybe links um, or sending attachments with uh, malicious code to ransomware. Now we have to be more cognizant of entire email uh, account takeovers and the impacts that can have as well. When we talk about email though, we always wanna start out just with a bare bones basic. You have your mail tenants, you're always going to want to have a gateway level defense. This is your traditional spam filtering service, encompassing your inbound and outbound scanning, as well as encryption and DLP, and of course the sandboxing of attachments uh, to protect against rent, against ransomware and other zero hour threats. But more importantly now, especially in Office 365, is data is moving to their different deployment options in SharePoint, OneDrive, et cetera. So having backup there is also critically important. Uh, as Microsoft will actually recommend as well, leveraging third parties to make sure you have the right retention policies, and of course, proper continuity in place to send and receive emails. The focus on today's presentation though is gonna be around the fraud protection, using AI-based spear phishing prevention, uh, using APIs with Microsoft. And of course, you always have to pay attention to that human firewall layer, always encouraging more security awareness training because they're always gonna be the weakest link in any organization. Now, when we talk about the email threat scanner, the underlying service or product that it actually is leveraging in the back end is our service called Sentinel. Uh, this is tied directly with APIs into Microsoft using global admin credentials. And the setup process takes only about five to, 50, uh, five to 10 minutes uh, to get deployed for both the threat scanner and the actual service. Now, we're gonna be analyzing over 40 to 50 different variables inside of an email, cross-referencing off of patterns we built across the entire domain to identify whether or not an, attack, uh, an email is a spear phishing attack or not. There's also more important aspects like DMARC reporting as well as account takeover reporting in there as well. And before we touch on the threat scanner, the email security with ATP, this advanced email security edition, this is gonna be your gateway level defense. And with the email threat scan, we're actually gonna be able to point out with the different types of uh, attacks that we can filter through where each of these types of service really come into play and where you should be positioning it to your customer. So what is the threat scanner? So the threat scanner itself, again, as I mentioned, is using the Sentinel backend. But instead of looking across the entire history of that organization, we're actually just gonna look at a year's worth of data, the most recent year's worth, and build up a parameter. And then we're gonna actually just report on what fraudulent attacks are we seeing inside that domain? Is there any DMARC issues? If maybe DTIM or SPF hasn't been correctly set up for the domains. Are they seeing blackmailing or employee impersonation? All of which we can do with just a simple threat scan that takes again less than 10 minutes to run. So typically with an email attack, a lot of times today getting more sophisticated, they're gonna start with an initial email, maybe impersonating Microsoft, for example, and trying to get them to click on a link and then log into a very realistic looking Microsoft page. But at the end of the day, it's the hacker's website. And now they just got the actual Office 365 credentials of that user. Now they're going to be positioning for an account takeover, get inside their domain, and now they can actually go ahead and set up forwarding rules so they can track all emails, but also now they can actually do uh, spear phishing attacks with internally within the organization or externally to both their customers, but also their vendors as well. Now, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and change up and share out my uh, demo site here. There we go. 
So the report we're looking at right now, this is actually the full Barracuda Sentinel, but it's going to give you all the same information that the email threat scan report does. Because we're in a demo environment, I just wanted to be able to show you guys the different types of attacks and what you can really identify uh, leveraging these types of products. So just quickly, at a glance, you're just getting an idea of if there's been any incidents recently from an account takeover perspective, um, how many attacks have been detected, um, are your domains all up to speed and uh, clean with DKIM and uh, DMARC policies. But let's start with the attacks here. So with the report yourself, on this left hand, left hand side here, you'll see filter attack. And this will bring up all the different types of attacks that Sentinel's gonna be able to identify in the threat scan to bring up to you. So let's start with conversation hijacking. Now, the biggest portion to understand about conversation hijacking is there's already an email correspondence going on between uh, one, over, one individual and another, probably about maybe an invoice being paid or a wire transfer to be done, something of that nature. And someone might have already account takeover and be able to read people's messages because they have a forwarding rule set up where they're reading all this inbound and outbound traffic. So once they see that someone's ready to go ahead and initiate um, a wire transfer, they're gonna hijack this entire email thread by using the exact same email address, but as you can see here, what the threat scan can pull up is there's an extra S in the actual domain uh, body of the domain instead of having only one S. That little difference can make a world of difference from someone now communicating with a hacker and potentially now wiring them tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars versus not. Another very important social engineered uh, spear phishing. 101 is employee impersonation. So the big examples I use right now uh, that I've seen are going to be your traditional wire uh, transfer frauds. Um, a lot of times, and it's really terrible right now, especially with the economy the way it is, uh, people are impersonating low-level employees uh, and impersonating them is going to HR or finance and asking for their direct deposit information to be updated. And that's becoming more and more prevalent as well. Let's take a quick look at an example here. So we've got an email from Neil, uh, to Neil Shaw from supposedly Lee or Gavish. Uh, and this is a very typical one where someone's trying to just get someone's initial reaction here. And of course, because of this email address, it's from Earthlink, there's nothing that we can do to block that. And there's no malicious items actually inside the content of the email. We actually have to use that machine learning and AI technology to associate values to the text and patterns that we can build up to identify that this is actually probably an attack because they're not using the traditional email address that Lee or Gavish typically uses. But it's also making an unusual request. A lot of times this will be leading to your gift card scams, um, typically as well, as of course also wire transfers offers as well. Another big one, though it seems very basic to most of us in the marketplace and the industry, uh, it does scare the living Jesus out of people here. It's your traditional blackmailing. Now these ones are gonna make appear that someone's already hacked into the customer's email or the computer. They've been logging information from their video camera and saying, if you don't pay this ransomware, uh, this ransom with cryptocurrency, I'm gonna release to the world all the naughty porn that you've been watching and blast your name across the world. Very basic. Um, the thing that they do use are these dark web scanning tools to pick up old email or uh, not just email addresses, but old passwords as well to help scare the actual user or recipient of this message to actually go ahead and act. And again, since there's no malicious content in sense of links, uh, attachments or domain that can be blocked, this message will go by pretty much any spam filter in existence. That's why you need artificial intelligence and machine learning to go ahead and prevent these types of attacks. Now, moving more closer to the service impersonation. So these are gonna be more similar to what you're gonna be using with the advanced email security with our link protection and typo squatting protection. What this is basically saying is we're looking at this email. Um, the email address is leveraged or used to send this to impersonate Microsoft uh, is not typical of what Microsoft will typically use. And therefore it will go ahead and block this type of message. And you can always just check here as well. I don't know if you'll be able to see the bottom left of my screen but it gives you the link that it's trying to send you to, and that certainly does not look like an Office 365 link to me. And of course, the scamming. So I think the best way to talk to you about the scamming is let's, let's bring it back to those robocalls we all used to get, not necessarily robo, with real people, uh, pretend to be members of the Nigerian prince's inner circle and trying to give you guys $100 million or $50 million if you send them a, an initial balance or down payment of some sort of money. 
this is exactly the same type of attack that we're seeing again today. People just trying to impersonate someone, being someone, someone from the military is a very common one, and just requesting someone help them pay or cover costs, uh, just as a traditional scam uh, that's always taken place. Now, the beautiful thing with everything here as well is some of the reporting that the threat scan is going to give you as well. When you run a scan, it's actually going to tell you who the top recipient within that organization is of the fraudulent emails. So that could be a good point to start talking to them about doing security awareness training, make sure they're up to speed, make sure their passwords are completely set and have a rotation every 30, 60 or 90 days to change it out because they're the ones that are trying to be attacked uh, more frequently, most likely because they have more authority. And we can also check who's the most impersonated. Um, this could range depending on the types of attacks, um, but whenever we're seeing like the big wire transfer, big money ones, Typically, it's C-level that is getting impersonated. A lot of times, the CEO or VP of sales or CFO uh, would be the highest impersonated sender. It would also go ahead and show you the top uh, sending domains that are fraudulent, uh, trying to attack your domain, but also the services impersonated here as well. And it's very cool. It even goes to the point of showing you what's the variation, like how many different types of which attack are occurring. And it gives you that type of information. Now, as we talked about, the conversation hijacking, employee impersonation, and blackmail, you need to leverage uh, an AI or uh, machine learning tool like Sentinel to be able to pre prevent these types of attacks from coming into the mailbox. Again, that's because there's no malicious content that's gonna block or trigger safeguards within the traditional gateway level defense. And you need to be able to identify and associate value to text to be able to go ahead and prevent these attacks moving forward. Now, of course, the service impersonation, that's also just going to allow you to show customers if they're not using any third party spam filtering and just using filter Microsoft. This will just indicate that there might be some uh, gaps within the existing security setup. It might be worth investigating a more secure uh, email security solution and leveraging something like Sentinel and our essential service together. Now, the last thing that aren't part of the email threat hand, but just to quickly talk about as well, will be the account takeover piece. This is going to be, because we're leveraging APIs, we're actually going to be looking at all the forwarding rules inside of every mailbox, looking for anomalies. Uh, the, one of the biggest signs of an account takeover is someone entering in a forwarding rule using some random address to, for the mail to be sent and maybe having something set, uh, set up to be deleted to cover their tracks. This allows them to just sit behind the scenes and gather the information to socially engineer their next attack, whatever it may be. And so by able to be alert to you to the different anomalies that we're seeing in that, as well as geolocation uh, locking attempts, it allows you to go ahead and lock down your customers. And directly when you use Sentinel, you can actually reset users' uh, Office 365 passwords after you detected an incident occurred. Um, I do want to take a moment here, um, as we've gone through most of the different uh, capabilities of the threat scanner here, to see if we have any questions that we can go ahead and get answered today. And just a reminder, if you have any questions right now, please go ahead and just put them in the question and answer or the chat box within the Zoom invite. And while we wait for a couple to come in, oh, I think we got one right here. Sorry, guys. Is there a way to give an assigned client administrative access to their entities for the organization with whether view only or administrative access? That's a great uh, question, Edward. Uh, so with the advanced email security, you definitely have the ability to give them access to be able to be log in and manage everything. When it comes to the email, uh, the Sentinel service itself, uh, less access per se. Uh, typically, it allows access to whoever is going to be setting up or have a master account for the MSP, and then be able to provide just reports directly to the customer from there instead of having the direct access, just because we don't want anyone to be able to go in and make any adjustments, and we don't just have a view-only uh, portal access only right now. A great question, Edward. Thank you for that. All right, from Craig. We are a very good MSP customer. Where does this show up in the portal? So the Sentinel service, uh, it's going to be separate portal from like your uh, Echo platform where you manage the customers and create uh, customer profiles, activate licensing, and different from the cloud control where you manage your advanced email security or different barriers services. Uh, inside Cloud Control, if you see on the bottom left-hand side, you'll see a link or a button that says Sentinel. You'll be able to click on that, but you do need to make sure you connect with the sales rep to get the proper licensing in place. We do always recommend getting NFRs if you use it internally as well. 
And let's see, uh, you mentioned running scans. Must scans be, must scans be run manually? Can they be scheduled from periodically? How is the scan process working? Another great question, Craig. So the email threat scan link that we'll make sure everyone gets access to uh, can be used an unlimited amount of times uh, by year itself. And you can run across as many different customers as you see fit. Again, it's only looking at a year's worth of history and it's not gonna actually prevent any types of attacks. So in order to initiate an initial, uh, the initial scan, um, you're going to have to basically provide global admin credentials going through the quick wizard. It takes about five minutes. Uh, you do have the ability to rerun the scans later on, but it's only going to capture the new uh, data from those next few months that you, since you ran the last one. Um, usually after the first scan, people typically go ahead and try and convert that into a full Sentinel account uh, to get the value of the actual service. But great question, Craig. All right. We have any other questions? So I think before signing off here, guys, the one thing I do want to highlight, and this is coming back to December 2nd, I want to say, uh, Microsoft did make an announcement and just highlighting how important it is to stay away. Uh, be careful of these spear phishing types of attacks because they admittedly said, we don't know how to prevent against them today. We don't have the technology in place and looking to third parties to be able to provide that additional security. Uh, Sentinel is going to be one of the easiest services for you guys to sell, especially leveraging the threat scanner. And just spending 15 minutes with your um, Barracuda MSP sales rep uh, to review the threat scan together, we will be able to arm you and make you an expert in no time. Another question from Craig. Assuming we have a full Sentinel account for a customer, can scans be automated? How often can they ramp? Uh, when this Sentinel account is fully set up, uh, there's no more work to be done at that point. Uh, the threat, uh, Sentinel itself will just go be, will be going ahead in the background and blocking messages depending on what you have set up for policies, such as you can have, uh, if we detect an attack, it'll automatically send it to the junk folder. It can alert the, uh, the user and it'll alert you as the MSG partner that there was an attack, nothing to worry about. You can have it permanently deleted, but there's no additional uh, action items that you'll need to make after that point. And yes, the Sentinel portal will become multi-tenant uh, to manage all your different customers all under one umbrella as well. Another great question. So I think, let me check. If that is all we have for questions right now, um, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Sarah. Uh, definitely wanna make sure you guys do take a moment to fill out that survey. And if, because if you do have additional questions that you, you haven't thought of quite yet, definitely feel free to put it into the survey or even just shoot us a, a quick email as well at the sales at uh, information. We do might have, we do have one last question here from Ed. What about if there's an email that we are not sure is an impersonation and we want the customer to verify what is in place for that? What steps do we take for that? That's a great question, Edward. Really thank you for that. Um, with inside the Sentinel service, and I can actually probably go ahead and show. Whenever you have an attack that came in and your user said, actually, no, I do think that this is realistic. So they can go to the junk folder and see it. Um, right here inside the Sentinel dashboard, you have what we call report false positive button. So if your user goes ahead and says, hey, no, this is actually a, a real email. Uh, go, can you go ahead and submit it to false positive? All you do is just select this button right here and it'll send it to the, uh, our Sentinel team. We'll then start updating the AI algorithm uh, to uh, incorporate that as well. And then just a clarification for Craig, uh, the demo NFR license let us run manually initiate scales as a sales tool. Once a customer signs up for the service, monitors uh, for the service, does it monitor the Office 365 tenant continuously? That is correct, uh, Craig. It will continuously monitor and report and block messages once it is fully active. And the threat scan is, of course, that great sales tool. Um, you can get NFR licenses uh, of the full Sentinel just for your own internal use. So you can take a look around and see the types of attacks. Uh, you can take a little bit more look into the DMARC reporting features of it and so forth as well. Let's see, got another chat. Oh, yep, and Sarah Duffy was brilliantly enough uh, to put in the link inside the chat function. Uh, and it's basically the link you're going to be going to is the barracudamsp.com forward slash scan. Um, and if there are no further questions at this time, I do just want to thank everyone so much for the time today. I do hope everyone's family and yourselves are staying safe. 
please take a minute to spin out this short survey. And if you have any interest in spin out, please reach out to your sales rep. We're more than happy to talk to you, especially how important it is during these crazy times. But otherwise, thank you so much for everything.